Hello students, thank you for tuning in. Let's do a review of scientific notation. You have this handout from class, and if you don't have it from class, you can download it from our website, edu. And we're going to review how to convert from standard notation to scientific notation, and from scientific notation into standard notation. So let's take a look at the example that we see here. We have a very big number there, 3,346,000,000. 3, and we are told or we are shown that it can be written in scientific notation this way. So some key things here is that in scientific notation, the number in front is always between 1 and 9.9 .9 repeating. In other words, it's always greater than 1 or less than 10. And then we multiply that by some power of 10. All right, so let's take a case where we would do 2.5. Now, I want to review with you what happens when we multiply by powers of 10. When we multiply by 10, all we're doing is moving the decimal place over one time. And so we get 25. And if we are multiplying times 100, which is really times 10 twice, 10 times 10, then we're just moving the decimal over two times. So that's 2.5 times 10 times 10, and we the decimal would end up there, we add a zero, so this becomes 250. So in that example, we multiply by 10, and then multiply by 10 again. And continuing with this, if we do, say, 2.5 times 10 to the fifth power, that just means that we'll take this number 2.5 and multiply it by 10 five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the decimal will end up there, we have to add in what we call placeholder zeros that keep these numbers 2 and 5 in the correct place. Now let's take a look at the example where we would do negative exponents. So 4.75 times 10 to the negative 1. So we can recognize that 10 to the negative 1 is actually, actually the same as 1 over 10. And that means this is also the same as just dividing by 10 to the 1 power. So in this case, because we're dividing, we are going to be moving the decimal to the left. So we end up getting 0.475. And we add a 0 in front to make the point not get lost. So doing a couple more like practice like that, 4.75 times 10 to the negative 2, this would mean that we are now moving the decimal over twice. 1, 2. It's going to end up here, and we add in a placeholder 0. So this would be 0 0.0475, and again, add a 0 in front. And as we saw before, multiplying times 10 to the negative 2 power is the same as dividing by 10 to the positive 2. So when we, when we think about scientific notation, we can summarize one thing here, which is that when we're going to the left, it's negative, going to the right, it's positive, kind of like the number line. And so what I mean by that is when we were multiplying times a positive exponent, we were going to the right. When we were multiplying by a negative exponent here, we were going to the left. So let's take a look at these examples. For number one, it's already given to you the answer, but we can see that this is 6.054, and then we have times 10 to the negative 5, so we're going to move this decimal place over 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's where the decimal place will end up. Add in our placeholder zeros, and we have our answer. Let's try number 9. So here we have 1.6022. We're going to multiply it times 10 six times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's where the decimal place will end up. We have to add in two placeholder zeros. So our final result is 1602200. And we should add in commas 123, comma, 123, comma. Let's take a look at number 2 over here. This one's a little different because we're multiplying times 10 to the 0 power. 
So how many times are we going to be moving the decimal? Zero, right? We're not going to move it at all. So we have 2.81, sorry, 2.181 as the number written in standard notation. Um, this brings up a good point, or an important, important point, that 10 to the 0 is 1. In fact, any number to the 0 power is just 1. And before we move on, I would like to ask you, what would happen if this was a negative number? So, for example, if, if there was a negative sign in front of that, how would that change our final result? And uh, it would, in fact, be just negative as well. So a negative in front means that it's a negative quantity. It has nothing at all to do with the exponent. It just means negative like maybe you have a negative balance in your bank account, meaning that you owe money. You could express the amount of money that you owe using either standard notation or scientific notation. So now let's take a look at how you start with a number in standard nota notation and convert to scientific notation. So if we have 675, we know that we have to convert this into a number that's going to be between 1 and 10 times 10 to some power. So what we can do is take a look at this 675 and recognize that the decimal point is going to have to go right there, 6.75. So we're basically just going along here until we come to the first number that's not a zero, which is just six. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of that for a moment. Where is the decimal place really in this number? It's really at the end. So how do we get the decimal point that we put here to the end? We multiply it by 10 two times, times 10, times 10. In other words, we multiply it by 10 squared. Okay, um, let's take a look at another example. So this time we can do a number like 847. Uh, no, sorry, let's make it bigger. 84,750. Okay, so we want to write this into, stand, into scientific notation. So some number times 10 to some exponent. And... Um, we can just go along until we get to after the first digit. So we're now going to be 8.475. And where is the decimal point really? It's at the end. So we get to multiply this number 8.475 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4 times to get, um, to get that value. Okay? So, and similarly, if we have a negative number in front, a negative number here would just mean a negative number here. Or if this is a negative 675, it's going to be a negative 6.75 times 10 to the 2. The number, the negative in front of the number has nothing at all to do with the exponent. So now let's take a look at ones where we have values less than 1. So how about 0 0.0054? If we want to convert this into scientific notation, then we go along here, keep going along until we get to the first digit that's not a 0. So it's going to be 5.4. Where is the decimal point really? Well, now we can actually see it's right there. So we have to move the decimal place how many times? 1, 2, three. So that means we're going to be doing times 10 to the negative three. Let's do one more. 0 0.0000805. So we're going along until right there. And I'm drawing this just so you can sort of see my thinking. You don't actually have to draw that red line. But we're going to have 8.05 and in fact let's get rid of that line and then we're going to be multiplying by negative ten, or multiplying dividing by 10 dividing by 10 1 2 3 4 5 and so that means times 10 to the negative 5 and it's kind of like the same thing we saw earlier 
when we were going the other way that we can associate to the left as being negative, to the right as being positive, like the number line. So when we're moving the decimal place to the left, it's going to be a negative exponent. When we're moving the decimal place to the right, it's going to be a positive exponent. Okay, so let's do some for practice. Um, let's do number 24 here. So the decimal point is going to go between the two fives. So it's going to be 5.518 times 10 to the what? 1, 2, 3, 4. 10 to the negative 4. And if we take a look at number 18, so where we're going to put the decimal point, it's going to go where it already is. So we're going to have 1.4481, and now we can multiply times 10 to what power? 0 power, because we don't have to move the decimal, it's already in the correct place. And again, this times 10 to the 0 is the same as just multiplying by 1. Okay, so try these for homework tonight, and we'll go over any ones that you want to go over in class.